Polaris Industries is an American manufacturer of snowmobiles, ATV, and neighborhood electric vehicles. Polaris was founded in Roseau, Minnesota, USA, where it still has engineering and manufacturing. The company's corporate headquarters is in Medina, Minnesota. The company manufactured motorcycles through its Victory Motorcycles subsidiary until January 2017, and currently produces motorcycles through the Indian Motorcycle subsidiary, which it purchased in April 2011. Polaris produced personal watercraft from 1994 to 2004. Robin, a subsidiary of Subaru Corporation, previously developed and supplied all-terrain vehicle (ATV) and snowmobile engines for Polaris Industries Inc. Starting in 1995 with the Polaris Magnum 425 four-stroke ATV and in 1997, with the introduction of the Twin 700 snowmobile engine Polaris started the development and production of in-house produced power plants, known as the Liberty line of engines, now found in many models across their current production lines. Since that time Polaris has continued to develop their in-house engine production capacity, now designing and manufacturing all of their own power plants, while maintaining the partnership with Subaru. In 2010 Polaris relocated a portion of its utility and sport vehicle assembly to Mexico. Components manufactured in Osceola, Wisconsin and the vehicle assembly in Roseau, Minnesota. The vast majority of powertrain and vehicles for the off-road line are manufactured in the Osceola and Roseau facilities, respectively. Both the Victory and Indian Motorcycle brands are American made with complete powertrains and vehicle assembly located in Osceola, Wisconsin and Spirit Lake, Iowa, respectively. History Edgar Hettin, who was described by the Snowmobile Hall of Fame in St. Germain, Wisconsin as the father of the snowmobile, David Johnson, and Edgar's brother Alan Hettin were partners in Hettin Hoist and Derrick in Roseau, Minnesota. Edgar had dropped out of school after the eighth grade in 1934. David Johnson and company employees Paul Nockenmus and Orlin Johnson, who was the first person to ride a Polaris, decided to create a vehicle that could travel through snow. These vehicles' primary use was to make hunting locations more accessible. David Johnson and several employees created the prototype in 1954 while Edgar was on a business trip. Edgar returned to Roseau to discover the snow machine and was furious the employees had used their time and company resources on the machine. This first machine used a grain silo conveyor belt as a track, a Briggs & Stratton motor, and an old Chevy bumper for skis. Edgar was skeptical of its value, and the number one sled was soon sold to Roseau lumberyard owner. Silver Pete H. F. Peterson for $465 in order to meet company payroll. However, the employees continued to focus on building snowmobiles, and soon a second model was created, with Alan Hettin leading the way. It was called the Polaris SNO Traveler. The first production model rolled off the assembly line in Minnesota in 1956. The original models weighed close to 1,000 pounds (450 kilograms) and moved at a speed of about 20 miles per hour (32 kilometers per hour). As Polaris snowmobiles gained sales traction, Edgar Hettin became an advocate of the new product line. 
In order to promote the new snowmobile and prove its reliability and usefulness, in 1960 Edgar led a three snowmobile, 1,200 mile trek across the Alaskan wilderness, starting from Bethel, Alaska. The trip took three weeks, and much of the time, Edgar struggled to maintain 10 miles per hour over the snow. The Fairbanks Daily News Miner put them on its front page. However, Edgar's absence caused problems for him with the Roseau Banks Board of Directors. Soon after completing the trip, Edgar left the company in June and started a competing company called Polar Manufacturing in Thief River Falls, Minnesota. The company name later changed to Arctic Enterprises. In the mid 1980s, it filed for bankruptcy amid fierce competition as snowmobiles became popular and other manufacturers jumped into the market. The company emerged from bankruptcy and continues on today as Arctic Cat. Polaris began developing a smaller consumer-sized, front-engine snowmobile to compete with the Ski-Doo in the early 1960s. In 1964, Polaris released the Comet. However, the Comet soon ran into problems as it could not travel in all types of snow conditions. Polaris then recalled the sleds and quickly developed a new prototype to avoid bankruptcy. The new model, the 1965 Mustang, became a hit as a family snowmobile and boosted Polaris sales. Polaris continued to develop snowmobiles similar to this model throughout the 1960s to 1970s, and went on to become one of the leaders in the snowmobile industry. In the early 1980s, Polaris started creating an indie style snowmobile with ifs and a wider stance. They continued with the indie style sled in the 90s with the Storm, Ultra, and Trail lines. Within the last few years, Polaris has reintroduced the indie model name. In 1985, Polaris introduced the Trail Boss, which is considered to be the first American made all terrain vehicles. ATV. In the late 1990s, Polaris introduced the Polaris Rocky Mountain King RMK, a snowmobile specific for mountain terrain. In May 2009, Polaris announced the creation of an on-road vehicle division. The new division will be devoted to the growth of Victory motorcycles and other on-road products and brands. In 2010, Polaris introduced the Polaris Rush snowmobile which had a new suspension system and better trail handling capabilities. This snowmobile is also available with retro graphics on the Rush and IQ models. In late 2005, Polaris Industries announced that it would purchase a portion of KTM motorcycles. Through this venture KTM has developed their own ATV and Polaris has developed sport ATVs which utilize the KTM 525 and 450 powerplants. On May 21, 2010, Polaris announced that it was opening a new manufacturing plant in Mexico. The sister facility in Osceola, Wisconsin still remains in full operation. The opening of the Monterey, Mexico facility is anticipated to save the company $30 million annually, with most of that savings coming from lower wages. The Monterey facility has three assembly lines devoted to production of Ranger side by sides for global markets. The original intent of the Monterey facility was to serve markets in the southern U.S. plus Mexico and North America. In October 2011, Polaris announced an investment in Bramo, Inc., an electric vehicle company based in Ashland, Oregon, United States. 
Its first production electric motorcycle, the Bramo Enisha, is assembled in Ashland and sold at dealerships. Polaris continued its investment in Bramo when it participated in the $13 million opening tranche of Bramo's Series C funding round in July 2012. Polaris had been showing interest in electric propulsion, producing an electric version of its Ranger side by side and more recently buying Global Electric Motorcars GEM. As one publication put it, this latest move likely signals the addition of clean and quiet drivetrains to ATVs and motorcycles under the Global Giants brand umbrella. Snowmobiles may have to wait on battery breakthroughs before they become commercially feasible. On January 15, 2015, Polaris announced that it had purchased the entire electric motorcycle business from Bramo. Production of electric motorcycles was slated to commence at Polaris Factory in Spirit Lake, Iowa during the second half of 2015. Polaris also manufactures Victory and Indian motorcycles at the Spirit Lake factory. In 2012, production restarted on the Indy named sleds stopped in 2004 with the Indy 500 with the release of the 2013 Indy 600 and Indy 600 SP. For 2014, Polaris will expand the Indy name and provide model variants for nearly all categories the one exception being the mountain. Class. On April 11, 2013, Polaris announced that it acquired Aixam Mega, a French quadricycle manufacturer. On January 9, 2015, Polaris announced it will be opening a new 600,000 square foot facility in Huntsville, Alabama that will employ at least 1,700 workers. Construction on the new manufacturing plant is set to start in early 2015 and should be opened by the spring of 2016. The plant will support several core processes including, vehicle assembly, chassis and body painting, welding, fabrication and injection molding. On March 7, 2016, Polaris acquired Taylor Dunn, a manufacturer of industrial vehicles based in Anaheim, California. On January 9, 2017, Polaris Industries chairman and CEO Scott Wine announced they would be shutting down. Victory Motorcycles, they announced they will continue to honor warranties and produce parts for Victory Motorcycles for the next 10 years. Racing Polaris Racing is one of the big four factory racing teams on the World Power Sports Association WPSA snowcross circuit. With 44 signed riders they also run in hill cross, oval track racing, and cross country racing. The Polaris Racing Team won eight different championships in the 2006–2007 season. Arnar Gunnarsson number 26 won the Pro Open, Gusti number 10 won Pro Stock, Clara Bjork number 89 won Pro Women at Iceland, TJ Guller number 44 won the WPSA Pro Stock Championship, Ross Martin number 837 won the WPSA Pro Open Championship, and Kylie Abramson number 87 won the WPSA Pro Women's Championship. Gabe Bunker number 74 has won the USCC Pro 600 Class Championship and USCC Pro Open Class. 
Dustin Wahl number 74 won the Pro Ice 440 Championship, the Pro Ice Formula Championship, and the Millennium 600 Open Championship, and John Sear III number 99 won the 2004 USCC Pro 700 Class Championship. Most all of the Polaris racing riders drive the IQR 440, 600 or 700 racer, depending on the class and the event. Polaris holds the most number of wins in the world's longest toughest snowmobile race, the Iron Dog a 2,000 miles race across Alaska. Polaris Defense Polaris Defense, a division of Polaris Industries, produces the MRZR platform and the DAGOR. MRZR In November 2016, the U.S. Marine Corps signed a $2.5 million contract with Polaris to deliver 144 MRZR DATVs. Called the Utility Task Vehicle UTV, it is a version of the vehicle already in use by U.S. Special Operations Command, but is designed to be diesel-powered and can run on JP-8 fuel. The Marines bought the unarmored ATVs because they can fit inside an MV-22 Osprey, enabling them to be deployed from long distances, to provide logistics support to ground combat units, assisting them to travel and transport supplies quicker and easier than previously on foot. The vehicles can carry four troops and have a small cargo bed capable of carrying 1,500 pounds of payload. It is planned to field 18 MRZRDs per infantry regiment. The vehicles are to be delivered from late January to April 2017. Topic DAGOR DAGOR Deployable Advanced Ground Off Road is a purpose-built ultra-light combat vehicle designed and built by Polaris Defense to meet the light mobility needs of light infantry and special operations forces, incorporating military commercial off-the-shelf COTS components and driveline system. The DAGOR was developed under contract from elements of the United States. Special Operations Command and International Special Operations Forces customers. The design using COTS components enables procurement of spares worldwide. The vehicle is produced by Michigan-based Roush Industries with deliveries commencing in November 2014 with 15 vehicles for use by the United States Special Operations Command, in January 2015 with five vehicles for the Australian Special Air Service Regiment to trial and deliveries were scheduled for the United Arab Emirates in April 2015 the vehicle can be configured in up to 48 different weapon configurations using the weapons ring and multiple pintle mounts. The vehicle is powered by a lightweight, commercial off-the-shelf turbo diesel, JP-8 engine located at the front section. The vehicle can transport a maximum payload of more than 1,400 kg or up to nine infantrymen in support of expeditionary missions. It offers high mobility and higher speeds over rough terrains. The vehicle is certified for air drop and internal air transport by CH-47 Chinook Heavy Lift Helicopter, and Sling Load under R-60 Black Hawk Utility Helicopters. 
the vehicle supports low velocity airdrop LVAD method on March 21, 2018, Polaris unveiled the DAGOR A1, which can carry approximately 20% more payload compared to the original DAGOR. See also Ica Polaris Multix, a personal utility vehicle manufactured by Ica Motors and Polaris India. Polaris Slingshot, a three-wheeled motor vehicle. <laughs>